Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you are all having a great day to start things off. Chang Peng Cao, who is the CEO of Binance, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, hinted at the addition of a fiat deposit feature to Binance. Binance recently added Trust Wallet as its official wallet, allowing users to buy cryptocurrencies with credit cards, which was major news yesterday. They announced that they were adding XRP to their support for this as well, showing the actual buying limits over here. 50,000 US dollars a month. Someone on Twitter said, well, that's great, but I'm just waiting for a fiat deposit and withdrawal service by Binance. Apparently, Changpeng Cao actually responded back to them almost immediately and said, soon, soon. So no one knows an exact time frame for when this is going to happen, but Binance, I remember, announced in 2018 that they were thinking of, or rather, they were going to add a uh, fiat-type thing to their actual service. The rumor is, or rather what a lot of people are thinking, uh, is that eventually when Binance does actually add fiat pairings to their entire thing and you can uh, put fiat currency on it or buy through fiat currencies or take money off of it in fiat currencies deposited directly to your bank uh, that coinbase may then have a harder time because everyone would probably choose to use binance uh, i will not lie to you i would probably almost only exclusively use binance uh at that point i mean i kind of really only use binance right now uh but sometimes Coinbase can be like an easy on-ramp or sometimes like an off-ramp as well, but that will not remain forever. There will be many other cryptocurrency exchanges who are going to have uh, fiat depositing features and also withdrawals on their website. Uh, I would not be, I mean, speculation, I, I don't know the guy, but I wouldn't be shocked if by summertime we had an indication that uh, it was going to happen relatively soon or if that they were activating it for at least Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum on the platform. Would be kind of cool. It's going to happen eventually. And yeah, I mean, there we go. Let's move on. Next up, I mean, that's really funny. And it's it's really funny how it happens is that so many times whenever I'm making a video, I never realize that I'm doing it. I guess subconsciously I must do it. I always have a news article about Binance and then the next article is always about Coinbase. I, I must be doing it subconsciously, just not even realizing that it's happening. Uh, this one pretty much talks about, it says, as promised, the leading U.S. Uh, crypto exchange known as Coinbase has dramatically increased the number of coins on its platform. They just added Stellar, and a few weeks ago, they added XRP. Um, however, this has not satisfied the, uh, the desire for many people in the cryptocurrency space uh, for other coins, because to be honest, people have been asking for uh, Lumens and XRP since around 2017 on their platform. They finally got around to doing it in 2019. Uh, and then last year, they were they announced that they were going to... Uh, or rather, they were looking at other coins that they could potentially add to their platform. At the moment, they support, for those who don't know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, LTC, Bitcoin Cash, Stellar, Ethereum, Classic... Zcash, 0x, basic attention token or BAT, and the USD coin. USD coin being the, I guess, the odd one of the bunch. But everyone's kind of waiting for now, and I don't think that they're going to do this in one fell swoop. If they did, I'd be pretty shocked. They did, they did something similar to that before where they announced, I think they were listing like three coins at once. I have a very strong feeling they may do like a, a, a batch listing as some of the coins may not be as important. Uh, but here's the list right here. For those who are looking at the screen, Cardano, Eternity, Aragon, Bread Wallet, Civic, Die, District Zero X, Engine Coin, EOS, Golem, IOST, Kin, Kyber Network, Chainlink, Loop Network, Loom Network, Loop Ring, Decentraland, Mame Frame, Maker, Neo, Omisego, Poet, Quark, Chain, Olgor, Request Network, Status, Storage, and Tezos. On Coinbase Pro, they actually have Civic, Die, District OX, Glo Gloom, Golem and Loom, <laughs> Decentraland, and Zcash. Uh, my opinion from what I've seen in the cryptocurrency space and what it appears that a lot of people have been asking for or what they actually want. Uh, people really want Cardano on the platform. EOS on the platform. Uh, looking down Neo to a certain extent. Definitely Omise Go. Maybe Algor. People really don't talk about Algor as much as they used to. Um, yeah, Golem is also kind of one, Ken as well. A lot of the other ones, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know the exact nature of these coins as we don't talk about them every single day. They are not in the news. They are not generally spoken about as being coins that are going to be listed on the 
major platforms. I think a lot of them have to be or probably ERC20 tokens. These are the coins that are built on top of the Ethereum blockchain protocol system, whatever you kind of want to call it. So I think a lot of them will be added simply because we know that Coinbase um, likes Ethereum. I don't know. I think Coinbase would explode if they added 28 coins at one time. I have a feeling that they'll never actually do something like that, even though they should. Uh, but I, I mean, it's nice to see that at least during 2019 that they've at least added XRP and Stellar to their platform. I mean, it's better than nothing. Um, I'm hoping that they actually do Cardano, EOS, Omise Go, and then Kin, and then Golem. And then like the other ones, I mean, they can add them at their own discretion. I don't hold any of those other tokens. Uh, we don't hear a lot about them. Anyway, like I said, all speculation, but uh, they have to do it eventually. They have to, at some point, if they want to keep up, if you want to keep up with Binance, you got to kind of play the game. Anyway, let's move on. I think this one is kind of cool. Lisk is reportedly joining Token Pay and the Litecoin Foundation. Both shareholders in the VEG Bank in a new move connecting blockchain ventures with the traditional finance world. The news broke during a live stream with Litecoin's founder. His name is Charlie Lee. VEG Bank, jointly owned by Token Pay and the Litecoin Foundation, has set out to increase its involvement with fintech projects in the future. The bank is open to the option of being wholly owned by its current minority shareholders. Reliable bank accounts and compliant financial services are still important for cryptocurrency projects. The relationship between VEG Bank and Lisk may run deeper as the financial institution will reportedly try to integrate with the Lisk ecosystem to communicate with other blockchains. The live stream, however, did not give details on the exact nature of the test. The Lisk network is relatively fast, relying on 100 elected delegates to produce blocks. Currently, the network is still struggling to find users. Or it's dApps. I mean, we're in a bear market. You can't really expect the dApp market to be flourishing as the rest of the market is kind of down in price. Uh, what makes me excited about this? First off, there were a lot of people when we had news about the, the Litecoin Foundation buying a stake in a bank. I think this is a German bank. I'm pretty sure this is a German bank. Uh, people were pretty upset. How could you? How dare you? wear cryptocurrency. How could you love a bank? How could you so and so and so? Not realizing uh, that if everything becomes digitized, you can have an option on the actual bank to be able to accept Lisk or to accept Litecoin or to actually have cryptocurrency payments in the bank. So you're kind of taking over the older system. This is kind of a smart way of doing it. Um, regardless, in my opinion, I think the most important part of this acquisition is to me is that we have a lot of cryptocurrency startups, projects around the world who are having a very difficult time finding a bank to be able to hold their fiat currencies with so that they can enter the cryptocurrency space. It is very difficult right now. This should not be this difficult. And this is part of the reason why I had a problem with Tron uh, spending $100 million uh, buying up BitTorrent as opposed to buying a 25% stake in this bank, buying their own bank. I think it's fairly intelligent. I think other people hopefully are going into things like this as well, either buying 25%, 15%, something percent, 51% of a bank that's out there so that they could make it so that they integrate cryptocurrencies and their blockchain into these systems so that we have more banks out there who are actually completely on our side, who are for decentralization. I don't know. Uh, and the interesting part is that we typically do not hear about Lisk almost ever and the fact that they are now a part of the litecoin foundation kind of i guess you can call it a partnership and also now own a stake in a bank this is incredibly huge this, this is the kind of news that i like when it comes to uh the actual moving forward of the cryptocurrency space i think other crypto projects could take a page from their book could learn how to take the lead uh could do something to realize that there's so much more that can be done as opposed to just trying to develop an app or a dap or video game or another platform that does this, or something that does this, or trying to buy this, or acquire this, or so-and-so-and-so, -and -so -and -so, or my, my thing is quicker than yours. When there's hundreds of millions of dollars flowing behind these projects, use that money to acquire... Uh, the easiest way that I could tiptoe around this is kind of, if you pay attention to other major organizations uh, in the normal world that have nothing to do with finance, one of the ways that they kind of uh, show their dominance, and it's actually been working for a very long time, uh, comically enough, McDonald's is actually one of the companies that does this. McDonald's is not uh, as important as you think it may be because they sell hamburgers. It's actually because of the real estate that they own. If many other places, are cryptocurrency-centric things, 
started buying up banks, the things that we are trying to take over and make cryptocurrency banks. So I tried to buy immense amounts of real estate so that we could ha kind of have our own Silicon Valley that is just dedicated to cryptocurrencies. I think the world, the crypto world would be a very different place. However, it's nice to hear, even though we do not hear from Lisk as often, that they pretty much have their heads screwed on tight and they know exactly what's going on. And it would be kind of cool if another coin kind of joined this uh, thing as well. And eventually, as I said over here, where is it? That they wouldn't mind, uh, you know, being wholly owned by the current minority shareholders. That is bang, bang, bang. If they end up becoming the complete uh, ho owners, whole owners of this platform or this bank, that'd be kind of cool. Anyway, let's stop talking about the, uh, the Litecoin Liska Bank and let's move on. Coinbase is, of course, once again in the news. Coinbase Custody has completed its first over-the-counter trade directly out of cold or offline storage. Announcing the news in a blog post on Wednesday, the San Francisco-based crypto exchange said the trade occurred after its custody service had been directly integrated with the OTC desk at Coinbase Pro. The news, it said, was a major unlock for its clients as it marked the availability of immediate liquidity. Previously, a trader would have to withdraw assets from cold storage, but the private keys are kept on a device not connected to the internet to a hot one or one that is online wallet at a trading platform in order to execute a trade. Market conditions can roughly can change can roughly can change quickly in time. It takes to do all this anywhere from 28 to 48 hours. Uh, so the major news is, is that you can now access your funds a lot quicker from the um, over the counter uh, cold storage. There was a problem, not a problem. I want to call it a problem anyway. Typically, put it. I, I, this is the easiest way of kind of saying it. If you have your funds in storage, whether they be cold or hot, and something should happen and you want your money immediately, uh, you're not typically in the mood to wait for uh, a day or days um, to actually have access to your funds. If you were around in 2017, you know how true that is. Uh, there were a lot of people who were complaining because we had an issue where the Bitcoin blockchain was backed up. Coinbase was shutting down. Kraken was having a really big problem with their entire systems. I think Binance had maybe just launched somewhere around that time. Uh, things were getting kind of crazy. People did not have access to their money. And there were so many people who were coming out of the woodworks. I mean, it was actually true. We were talking about how much money that they were losing and missing because uh, in a bull market, prices don't uh, trend sideways. They go up and down completely insane. So there were a lot of people who could have had trades or could have had access to their money uh, in a second, have traded it, made some really good trades, you know, $25,000 in one day. And they couldn't because of all this stuff that was going. Anyway, uh, so this is apparently amazing news because everyone seems to be talking about uh, the Coinbase OTC uh, doing directly from cold storage. That's wonderful. I'm sure many people will benefit from this when we actually have a bull market. But yeah, let's move on. Nasdaq is in the news. Here's the, and it's going to sound insane for those who aren't looking at the screen. There's a company and they're called Because. It's literally spelled B-C-A-U-S-E. So that is, you know, because when you read it, it sounds completely insane. So just keep that in mind. The company is called Because. Because LLC, a self-described full-stack cryptocurrency ecosystem, plans to use NACDEC, NASDAQ technology to operate its markets. The company announced on Wednesday that it would be using NASDAQ's matching engine clearing and market surveillance tools through the NASDAQ financial framework platform to operate a spot cryptocurrency market to be launched within the next few months. Because has also filed to become a designated contract market and to launch a derivatives clearing organization with the U.S. Commodities Futures Trading Commission. According to a press release, because plans to be the only one-stop shop to operate a spot trading market, crypto market, facility, and futures derivatives clearinghouse once regulators approve the latter offering. In a statement, NASDAQ Senior Advisor, President, and Head of Marketing Operations and New Market Paul McCowan Cowan said because, my goodness, has methodically built a unique ecosystem that gives investors, partners, and market players a holistic experience in tapping the cryptocurrency market and value chain. He went on to say, by leveraging the NASDAQ financial framework, because we'll have the scalability and modular functionality to introduce new microservices and expand its business offerings to meet industry demands and the evolution of the digital assets economy. The first, oh, but they're not one of the first companies uh, to actually announce that they're going to be using the NASDAQ tech. What's interesting about this uh, potential amount of news is that 
Uh, NASDAQ has been, I don't know if this is an actual acquisition, uh, but they've been partnering with a lot of other companies who are going to be using their technology. And this once again ties into the fact that people in traditional financial markets, the mega players, if you kind of want to call them that, uh, need to, in their world, have the stamp of approval from NASDAQ or from the New York Stock Exchange to kind of, this is why he, you know, had a statement to say, yeah, we're using them or rather they're using us. Uh, and we have a mutual benefit understanding because uh, as nice as it may seem, it is kind of not really practical to have NASDAQ running every single thing running through the entire channels of the exact NASDAQ. So they are trying to, my opinion, partner with many different companies and stuff like that to be able to, uh, kind of not do everything in-house if that kind of makes a lot of sense. I mean, kind of cool, kind of amazing, kind of awesome, but it's just another stop. And I mean, this is just another, just another thing, uh, that let me know that uh, lets me knows that lets me know that crypto is not going anywhere because they're building up these massive walls to make sure that everything is okay, that everything is there for, uh, compliant reasons for custody, for institutional investors to let them know that they are also, uh, not slowing down. If you kind of want to say that still waiting for exact news from NASDAQ as to exactly when they're going to launch, but, uh, they told us March, it is still March. Let's see if what happens. Kind of the, uh, most, um, ridiculously obvious news of the day. Uh, the U S department of treasury has sanctioned a Moscow bank over its role in financing Venezuela cryptocurrency known as the Petro. The Treasury announced on Monday that its Office of Foreign Affairs Assets Control, OFAC, has added Evro Finance, Mosnar Bank, which is jointly owned by Russian and Venezuelan state-owned firms, to be the specially designated nationals list as it was the primary international bank that helped finance disputed Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro's failed... Petro project. Early investors in the Petro were invited to buy the cryptocurrency by wiring funds to a Venezuelan government account at Evro Finance. Evro Finance involvement in the Petro demonstrated Maduro's hope that the Petro would allow Venezuela to circumvent U.S. sanctions. The Treasury has also said that Evro Finance supported Venezuelan state-owned company Petroleos de Venezuela. S A P D V S. My gosh, these names, which has long been a vehicle for corruption embezzlement and money laundering by Maduro and his cronies. Who uses the word cronies? The firm has also been on the U.S. sanctions list since January. What's important here, for those who didn't uh, get it, uh, politics aside, don't even care about that at the moment. Um, when cryptocurrencies did exist, I think sanctions were probably a lot more terrifyingly or scary However, um, when you have many countries around the world, and I'm, 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 I'm sure of this, we know that Venezuela is doing it, uh, are buying up cryptocurrencies be, to be able to use between themselves or launching their own cryptocurrencies. I'm, it's fairly certain right now. We had news a couple of months ago that Russia was apparently going to be making their own cryptocurrency. No news about that. If it does end up happening, I don't think it's going to last very long, my opinion. We had news a couple of days ago uh, that Venezuela, for those who were not here, and this is part of my confusion as to why the cryptocurrency prices, Bitcoin's price hasn't completely gone through the roof. Uh, Venezuela announced that if you want to send money into the country, it has to go through the national government's uh, remittance or like their money transfer service. And the only things that are allowed are their paper money, their digital currency, the Petro, or Litecoin and Bitcoin. They've pretty much announced that Bitcoin is legal tender in their country because it's one of the only options to actually get money in and out of the country. What have you. The point is, uh, there have been a lot of sanctions going around in the world. And if you're trying to get people to use cryptocurrency and not worry about your sanctions, this is kind of the way that you go about it. I'm once again fairly certain, in my own opinion, in my eyes, that a lot of these cryptocurrencies made by these countries are probably not going to do as well as they would like them to do. What's only going to end up happening is that, and I'm waiting for the news, waiting for it, is that these countries are going to start sending Bitcoin and Litecoin amongst themselves uh, back and forth as these payments can't be stopped, especially when we actually have, wouldn't it be something insane? Because the governments have come up before and said that they want people to use Bitcoin because they can track the transactions. Litecoin has announced that sometime during 2019 that they're going to be having, uh, I think it's other Mimblewimble. I don't think it's ZK Snarks. 
either way, they're going to have private transactions. They're going to have it so that you can either have private transactions or unprivate transactions. Wouldn't it be something completely insane if all these countries around the world started using Litecoin as their money that they were passing between Venezuela, between Russia, between uh, North Korea? What was the other one? There were like three other ones that I'm missing. That would be kind of insane. I still don't think that normal people would understand that they should be buying up the coin at that point, especially when you have an entire country talking about, hey, you know, Bitcoin's legal here. Anyway, I thought that was kind of not funny, uh, rather interesting because uh, the more sanction, I mean, it's first of all, cryptocurrencies aren't going anywhere. It's not like they're going anywhere tomorrow. Uh, even Andreas Antonopoulos said when you have, you know, even if Bitcoin in the entire cryptocurrency space were to die tomorrow, everything went to zero. Somebody else would simply create another cryptocurrency because the idea is there in people's heads. And the longer that Bitcoin and blockchain are around, the more that people will realize that there is another option to the current financial system that we have. And if you keep putting sanctions on top of countries who probably already don't like you because you keep putting sanctions on top of them, uh, you only push them further into this blockchain world of actually using Bitcoin and Litecoin. Who knows? They may already even be using this amongst themselves already. That would be uh, even crazier news. However, once again, uh, at least that last part is speculation. We know that the rest of that is, is all happening. All these countries are making their own crypto. Anyway, uh, prices are still doing a little dance. I decided to hold my breath about an hour ago uh, because Bitcoin started going up in price. Uh, according to analysts, because the volume is so high, it appears that maybe, I'm not going to, I dare not speak the words, that Bitcoin could potentially pass by 4,000 and try to reach its next uh, significant level of 4,500. We have a lot of people who are saying that Bitcoin could potentially hit 5,000 by uh, springtime. The, their words, not mine. Uh, Bitcoin, in my eyes, should be at least $8,000 right now, if nothing more than uh, rampant speculation alone. However, uh, I'm going to take a step back. Stellar still up a tiny bit because of the, what you call it, uh, t -t 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 the Coinbase listing, uh, Bitcoin Cash, never in the news, always being pumped. Nothing else is really doing completely insane at the moment, I think. Where was it? Uh, Nam, I have no idea why that's up. Where was the other one? Qu Quantum is also up. Oh, was, there we go. I was looking for Lisk. Uh, Lisk makes a bit more sense as to why the price is up. That, wow, that's it. Look at that. The difference in volume for Lisk at 15 million and Quantum at 1.8 billion. That is more, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure I'm not, that is more than XRP. That is almost thrice the amount of volume that Quantum has over XRP. What a time to be alive. Alrighty, everyone. That is definitely going to do it for this video. I hope that you all enjoyed. I hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. What is crypto.com crypto chain? Okay. It's another. Oh, yeah. Okay. See, the volume right here is not that high. Anyway, as always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are Vlad the Impaler, Gil Boa Snake, Rai Rai. Brady Nields, L. Doug, Arthur Yaku, Professor Wally from Gun Bot University, Nick Mangialavori, Travis Haynes, Yasha Harari, Anthony Charles, Nick Kanaya, Singer, Songwriter, Mike Savitz, Wise Night Owl, Joey Carafa, Crypto Joe, Jim Gardner, Jared Schneider, Jeremy Fox, Amy Starsheen, Richie Rich the Third, Jeffrey Ramsey, Cody, Carl Birchinoff, Paxis, Jeffrey Dam, Nicholas, One Earth, One Peace, One Love, Setsuna, Minting Coins, and Cryptnotic. Thank you all an incredible amount for your generosity. As I was saying the names, I think I was saying them. A little louder than usual and i'm pretty sure my neighbors hate me just a, just just an inkling i mean it's not too late here just about to turn uh 8 p.m however uh they stomp all the time but the moment i make noise i'm pretty i i, I can feel like it bothers them not, not that any of you need to know that anyway thank you all once again for watching and listening and yeah